building is a landmark. It's the birthplace of hip hop for a lot of us in here. And the people who are respected in hip hop all cite this place as the birthplace of hip hop. You were the first DJ that I was able to see. I wasn't able to see her. I was right. too short. But I created the needle drop before I created the scrap. And when I created the needle drop, just playing on my mother's stereo, picking the needle up on the James man. Brown record. Oh, rock. Rock. What's up, man? Right. What's up, man? They classified me as the MC, but I played the music. So this is why I know when cats say they was at certain parties, I knew you wasn't there because oh, man. you would have said I played the music. <laughs> I want to thank Cool Hurt because he's a hero of mine. I want to thank Coke the Rock for spitting the first rhyme. I want to thank the Grand Wizard Theodore for inventing the scratch and the cuts galore. But don't underestimate an MC's task. Grandmaster Cash will surprise your ass. <laughs> All right? And when the party people want to know who said this what, tell them G-L-O-B-E showed up. Thank y'all very much. All right, if everybody wants to have a seat, we are going to kick off right about now. So for me to stand in this party room right now is the rock standing in here and theater globe and Kaz and, and all the rest of y'all you know who you are <laughs> everybody in here i mean just to just to be in this room right now i'm, I'm still soaking it in so there's a reason my brain was farting because it was just like where the hell am i this is this is where it all began and this is the place that gave me an identity i was thinking about you know like robert johnson's role in the history of the blues Buddy Bolden's role in the history of jazz, and how sometimes the most iconic and most potent and most innovative artists do not become mainstream names, but they become the names that are the most celebrated by, on one hand, scholars and academics, on another hand, super nerd fanboys and fangirls, all of these ventures together will ultimately be what helps people 100 years from now, 200 years from now, let's say 300 years from now, to understand the absolutely extraordinary cultural narrative that commenced in this room. Most of y'all know her. A lot of y'all don't even know Coco Rock. A lot of y'all heard of my name, you thought I was a myth, but again, I didn't write music, I didn't follow people, I was like a regular bronze cat. I did this, I did that. What you really did, we all did it together. Today, G-L-O-V-E means um, God loves our best efforts. Because mm. that's what it's all about now. Remember the days when hip hop began to pop off on your block? All of a sudden, out of the blue, the world was doing it too? Anyone really ready to battle, baby, we can go bout for bout. Forget about mouth for mouth. I'm knocking knuckleheads out. Blow up the blow, hit the, hit the universe lit. Combination, not the combination. We are all determined not to quit. The snap at the crack of the bite of the apple, the one and the only, the mac of the roni. Nevertheless, try to triple it up, pop, jubilate it up, shake it and break it, the taste and make it, the pop it in every move. I make it, thumping it, jumping it, thumping it, jumping and bumping it. That's for all my folks out there. That's what MC Pop is. I honestly believe that I was introduced, I was born into this culture, born into this art form. I didn't wake up one day and it's like, Oh, I want to, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be into hip hop. I was into hip hop from day one, you know, and um, you know, God gave me this gift. Everybody in this room has a gift, and I realized what my gift was early on. There's so many DJs that put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this art form, into this culture we call hip hop. And every time you see me get on the turntables. I carry the spirit of all these people. 
There's nothing that has affected this planet in the last 45 years bigger than hip hop other than the internet. As far as our culture is concerned, it's 40 some odd years old and that's not old and that's really not long when you think about time uh, and, and in a continuum. So we had a lot more history to make. So thank you. Thank you and thank you. One love. Break it, make it hot to the heavy hot skillet. You slip, make it stop, crash it, quickly, my chill it. Turn it with a bang, cause more than making money. Spin it around while you're looking to be. You like what you hear? This is not a test. I'm MCing, see what's the beat. And me, myself, and I ain't gotta try to move your feet. Alright, 30 seconds, here we go. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. Let's get it is that coming from my... What's amazing? This is Hip Hop in Action. I am your host, DJ Boom, founder of the Hip Hop. An incredibly special guest tonight, one yeah. half of Dex, yeah. sir. Crazy to the Drazy. Crazy Not Drazy in the building. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, man. So... This is perfect because not only do you live here in the DMV, yeah. and we are so happy to have you in our area, yeah. but you uh, are coming at a perfect time because we have an exhibit right now All right. in our art gallery called Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. All right. And from what I can tell, you have brought a little present oh, yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah. Not a present, but yeah. a little show and tell with you. Bring it over. Bring it over. Look at this, everybody. Yeah, 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 Look yeah. at this. So can you tell everybody, for, for people that don't realize, you know, just how amazing Daz Effects is and was in the 90s taking over everything, please yeah. tell us a little about this plaque. So this is our, why I bought this one is because this was my first ever plaque that was given to me for going gold with the album Dead Serious. So, I mean, I, not to brag, of course, I have the typical. Please brag. One, you know what I'm saying? No, now, rep, I have brag. the typical platinum one. Okay. But this one is a little bit special because. The first was, one. It was the first one, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, yeah, this was vindication for dropping out of school and validation. So, speaking, about dro speaking of dropping out of school, yeah. uh, is it true that you guys actually got your record deal through a contest? Yeah, yeah. So tell tell me uh, about what that was like in, in a short synopsis, and, and and how it worked out that you got the deal but didn't win the contest. How'd that happen? Yeah, I mean, shortly, um, all right, short story. We were juniors at Virginia State University. We heard on the radio, listen, rap contest tonight. EPMD is hosting it in Richmond, Virginia. Come on down. Me and school. Shout out to school. We got our best raps together. The song at the time was Clap Your Hands for all the Dallas FX fans. So we went down to the club. We performed Clap Your Hands. We was digging it. There were 10 acts and they were being judged by numbers. So we knew we won, but there was some politics where Parrish told the host, listen, let the other guys win. It's a well-documented story. The guys even know it. So they won. And then, you know, the infamous, while we were kind of tight about it Paris walked over and said you guys want a hundred dollars or a record deal Damn. obviously you know we chose the record deal <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history like literally facts history facts. and i'm not exaggerating when i say in 1994 yeah. what year did the single come out nine march of 92 92 so in 1994 yeah when I was, or 93, when I was a freshman at GW, George Washington University, I played this single. Yeah. So And so did our DJ. Oops, you know what? Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is our DJ and our music director for the Hip Hop Museum. He's like literally the hands of God. I forgot he's with us. Can you say hi to everybody? The R, the B, the I, the I, the I. Nice. He talks with his hands. So, RBI, thank you so much for being uh, with us. And he can attest to the fact because we were we grew up together here in DC. Yes, sir. So, c can you think of many other singles that you spun as often as you spun? Ninety two, it's a tough deal. Ninety two, Das Effects, y'all y'all had a, a, a high year crown over. in ninety two, bro. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think I think Tribe Scenario, maybe you know what I mean? Oh Compete. right. There's this, and maybe yeah. something from Dre. But Dre Dre came in at the end of the year. But yeah, but Das Das kind of held ninety two down. You know what I'm saying? And the single, you came out so early. The longevity of the single lasted for literally five, six, 
I mean, to this day, you can yeah. play the single and what it, it was, literally. Was, it had its run, the original phone, but then once the remix kicked in, it took it to, to a you know, whole nother gave level. It another leg or two. And then the second single, which was um, Mike Checka. Oh, boom, sure. Boom, or, da -na -na, once. So we had these two singles with these two intros right. that people kind of knew. I'm you telling you. It, DC in particular, you got to keep in mind, you remember uh, one of our legends, DJ Cool. Right. That's right. my man. Shout <laughs> out to his, Cool. He, kept, right. he put some more legs yeah. on this for exactly. another 15 on the years. Intro right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a show. Uh, we did the Tom Joyner Cruise a few years ago with uh, the homie and a whole bunch of other people. But yeah, he had he, he did this on the boat, too. That was crazy. That's dope. Just real yeah. quickly, you good on audio, Danny? Do you, Danny, do you need your shotgun? <laughs> you're, you're good on audio? Okay, cool. Yeah. But CLB, what's your recollections of Daz effects back in the 90s? Well, that's when I first moved to the district okay. from Jamaica. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yo. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of that music was new for me. Yeah. But I definitely remember playing you in the at the house parties. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be a mixtape DJ. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK. OK. <laughs> Even in Jamaica. You put oh, Daz yeah. effects on at any house party and the house party exactly. immediately it's, gets it's, better. It's, it's a rite of passage. You have to write a that. passage. You know uh, Spencer, yeah. can you take this from our set here? We're going to uh, get this off set, and then we're going to get right into some amazing unboxings. And we're just going to talk about them. Let's do it. Okay. And we're also going to let people know uh, that they will soon be able to buy these items. If you want to bid in the yeah. comments, you're welcome to bid in the comments. Um, but also, they'll all end up in our shop, which is at hiphopmuseumdc.org. I love it. Okay. Hey, fellas, can, can, I, can I suggest um, as an addendum? Yes. To Das's dominance in '92. <laughs> yes. Can can we talk about how you can tell Das was dominant in '92 by the way hip hop changed in '93? Yeah. For sure. How many different artists by 1993 because of Das effects? Can we get into that? Yeah. I, I, it's a you can make a compelling case. Das effects is groundbreaking style <laughs> hip-hop would not have gone the direction that it went what do you think of the sound that hip-hop took after you guys you know when you are 21 22 and people are biting your style you get tight you know what i'm saying yeah. so as a as a as a 22 year old 23 year old and then you throw money on top of it you kind of get cocky and you're like yo you know, but as you get you oh flatteries the blah blah blah, you know, imitation of the of yeah. of flattery. Yeah. So you go with that, but when when you're younger, you, you get super tight. Like what did you think of Fushnickens? We we didn't like any of them. Right. We didn't like any of them. It went right for the jugular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. But it's well documented. We didn't like none of them. We thought anybody close to us, especially, you know, one of the stories was with crisscross because they were miggity miggity macking all over the place. Oh, right. right. So we were super tight and it was two of them and all of this. But, <laughs> you know, but but I think what happened with us is once the fans got the whole album, they saw that it was what we were really doing, you know, so of course. And then it just with the second album is why we kind of dropped the iggity, you know, and tried to show <laughs> We could rhyme without it, which looking back, I don't even think we should have done that. We should have just stayed true and just kept because it. it was yours. Yeah, it was ours. You Not know? your fault. Everyone yeah. else. I had the it. same conversation with um Fredro from Onyx because uh -huh. they went through something similar with the yelling and they the, tried to tame and it then down. They kind of tamed it down. Yeah, and bad then, mistake. Yeah, but you, you know, know what? We live and we learn. You live and, and you, and learn. you can definitely uh, say that of all the groups that use that style yeah the originators had the the best longevity yeah for sure I mean. so i think that's important all right we're gonna this is a game show yeah it's a game show where we open stuff for the hip-hop museum and the hip-hop shop and we and we like to give a shout out to where it's coming in from uh wow can you say that? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what? I Just can got you say on. it's coming from Japan. It's Where coming in from Japan. Japan. It's coming from sh sh Shizuoka, Shizuoka, Japan. Here's right. your, oh wait, those are your scissors. Oh, uh, yeah? Those are your scissors. Shizuoka. Okay, Shizuoka. Yeah. Are you woka? Right. No. She's a woka. Um. <laughs> All right, so I'm cutting into this here. She's a woka. Right, Everybody is mad enlightened in that town of Japan. All right. 
All right, what you got in there? What do I got? I got balls. Paws. Can you get off of my balls? Can you get off of my balls? We got balls, everybody. Wait, this is hilarious. You know what? Hold on. Why do I feel like this isn't meant for this show? <laughs> what no, other no, no, type no, no, of show no, you no, got? No, keep going. No, oh, keep yeah? going. I actually, no, I think this is for this show. If it's not, you'll just be unboxing my sex toys. All right. <laughs> just kidding. No, I, I, I swear I really do think, oh, we like to do this. Oh, hey! Woo! Okay, ready? Let's open these. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's open these. Check this out, guys. Look, it's a miniature Technique 1200. I swear, y'all. Right. Look at that. Is that crazy? It's a tiny little Technique 1200. And I got, I got, got, I got headphones in there. Hold the, it up, hold it up. I got headphones in the what? The mixer? Is that what this is? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, that's an MK2 1200. This is the actual. That's a good idea. I like these, this. These are these are little um toys that come in like you know the gumball machines, but in Japan. This is a, a, a Technique 1200 right here. This is so cool. Ah, I got a Technique 1200 too. You got to pull that up. That's a CDJ. Wow. That's a CD. What did you get? I got the turntable. That's crazy. You got the turntable? Yeah. This is so cool. Danny, we'll have to like lay these out. Yeah, I like get this. get a close-up and cut it in afterwards. Look. Oh, my God. Look at this, yo. It's got the little tone arm. That's serious. And the thing. Okay. Oh, that is a nice little setup right there. Okay. Detail. Wow. Detail. That's dope. Detail. All right. Let's put this. Oh, this is never going to work. All right. All right. This is like leg stockings. Oh, this is. Oh, I see. Okay. So RBI yeah. is trying to show us that he's playing a song that makes yeah. sense with what we unboxed. Am I right here? So he's telling us okay. that these little tiny turntables. I like it. Are the real hip hop? I get you. You see what it I see, see what, what he you, does. I see what you're doing. Okay, so each, I see what you're doing. Each one. Okay, it's gonna be a song that makes sense. Spencer. Okay. Do we have a va a male Don't Vanna stop. White? <laughs> hip hop. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, okay. I got some more show and tell too. I forgot my wife. Um, you got more show and tell? Yeah, yeah. Let me um. Oh my god. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I forgot. Ooh. Yeah, this right here, real quick, <gasps> is from the night we were we were Signed? we were discovered by EPMD. Wow. Right. Yeah, oh yeah. my god. Yeah, that's the night in the back of the club. Yo. In the middle of sleep. Yeah. yeah, still from what? the club. January 31st, 1991. Thanks, baby. Oh, what? Yeah, that's the night we went down there to the rap contest. Uh, that's crazy, right? Speechless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am so speechless. And this right here is one of the few times uh, we, oh, one of the many times we ran into Pac. But uh, oh my God, yeah, Look we at had this picture. Yeah, guys. us and Pac at the airport. <laughs> Two Pac <laughs> and Dawes effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please listen to my demo. Please listen to my demo. Yeah, that's crazy. Please listen. To okay, my you see what he's doing? Ah! Here? You see what he's doing? Yeah, here? I see you. Please listen to my demo. I see you, Arby. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh my God, we will beg you to donate those after this show. Okay, all right. If we could turn turn ourselves down just a little, so if we can hear hear the oh, there we go. Or an instrumental is good too. Okay, this is coming in from. Oh, you're getting all the worst ones. Oh, yeah. This is coming. You have in to from... say that. You have to say that. All right. Hold up. This is coming in from. Oh, Shadam. Coming in from either Shadam or Shy Dam, but it's in the Netherlands, so you know. Yo, we in the Shy. We in the Shy. The Shy Dam. <laughs> Shout out to all our shy fans in the Netherlands. Of the Netherlands. We'll be back real soon, y'all. Here we go. What is this? Wow. All right. Uh, Ooh. Looks well, fancy. Oh, it looks I, I gotta okay. Be honest with you. Dear this does not even look like it's meant for this show. What the hell? It's a. It's a. What it's is a, going on it's right a now? Planner. You're not gonna look inside of it. I feel like I got this for my wife and forgot. No. Uh, I this, literally feel like I got this for my wife. So this one's actually, a no go.
this? I, I'm, no. Every now and then, it's just like for us personally. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's weird. If, if a pair of lingerie gets unboxed. Oh, you know what? This is for the show. Look who All that's right. from. So this is coming from. Look. Say that backwards. Oh, Wise Intelligent. I got you. All right. Open what up? it up. All right. Open it up. Wise Intelligent, the lead rapper of Poor Righteous Teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came out with a uh, a new book yeah. the ah. other day. Came out with a new book. Oh, yeah. And, of course, we have to get, you know, a signed copy for the hip-hop shop. Well, I think your nice. wish has been granted because... Uh, ooh. Two signed copies. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. And it's oh, called yeah. Three Fifths and MC, the manufacturing of a dumbed down rapper. Oh, wow. He went there. Man. Wise he doesn't pull any punches, huh? Wise no, Intelligent is just. And of course, what do we have in the background? Wise Shaquilla. Intelligent. Right. That first video or whatever video where he was on the bridge is classic. Classic. I mean, right? you know, with the with the little moves he was doing. Talking about. Uh, Come on uh, now. Funky, uh, what's the, what's the name of their best singer? Yeah, um, Brock that funky Rock joint. That, he's Rock that funky he's joint. He's purposefully not speaking to me because he's working. That joint is one of my all time. I'm not sure what year that came out. I think it was before us. So that was, I was, you know, uh, and being Rock from that Jersey. Funky joint. Yeah. I'm thinking that's like 91 or 92. Classic. Come there on now. Come on now. That's classic material right there. 1990. Yeah, right. 1990. All right. Yeah, classic. Right wow. There. All right. I must say the cover of this book feels rather good. <laughs> it does feel rather good. this book. It, no, it really does. Feel that book. It's like rubbery. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but uh, you'll be able to get read this, these signed copies in the hip hop shop shortly. CLB. Oh, no, you got a box cutter. I'm going to let you open this one. Where's that coming from? Chatsworth, California. Chatsworth, California. Cali, what up? Here we go. What up to all my DOS Effects fans out there in California? I, told you I you see you. You just have a scissor, but you know, you wanted the Jamaican uh, box uh, cutter. That's uh, what you wanted. Uh, it's that box cutter. Chaman. Uh, Not a box uh. cutter. You're originally from T Neck, right? True you that. Know? Yeah. So you, yeah, poor, poor rights your teachers is uh, yeah. Trenton. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Jersey, you know it. Yeah, so Jersey in the house. You know it. Oh, you, uh. you're having me do this? Yo, uh. Chris Yo. Ray. Come here. You're being summoned. Uh. Every now and then we get things on this show that's meant for other shows. We have finally <laughs> received. Little what? Dickie's brain. Oh wow! Plush toy. That's right. Y'all familiar with the rapper <laughs> Little Dickie? Yeah, yeah. This is Little Dickie's brain. Is that right? Hey, he's so tickled. You too. Fucked our show up. It's all your fault. <laughs> oh my god, We're damn! We've crazy. literally been waiting. Look at that, Little Dickie. We've been waiting for that for <laughs> six months. Wow. All right. And now is when it appears. Sorry, this show is is really getting off to a weird start. Okay. All right, where's that coming from? This is from. Hilo, Hawaii. Hilo, Hawaii. That Been sounds there. that sounds lovely. Shout out to all our fans and shout out to Hilo. All right, let's see. Let's see how this goes. Oh, they got it. They got serious stuff. I'm gonna oh, help yeah. you out here. All right. This is this is some serious yeah, packaging. Go. See, they don't mess around in Hawaii. They don't mess around because you never know. Yeah, this thing's coming a long way. Oh my god! All this, right, this is coming a long way. Good, man. It's cool to know that stuff is coming in from Hawaii, right? My God, this is intense. Oh, my God. This is cool. I actually know what this is. So I'm going to ask you what you think of Slick Rick. Oh, what I think of Slick Rick? What do I think of Slick Rick? What do you think of Slick Rick? I mean, put it like this. If there's a Mount Rushmore hip hop, he should be up there. He should be up there? Yeah, I mean, the, the guy is different. He was a, he's a trendsetter. Was was the show an influential I'm, track for of you? Of course it was. Of course it was. You know? Oh, my God. Change, that's one of those, you know, as a kid, change your life. What could this right. be? So, from what I understand, 
Yeah. This is. I see a gold chain on the front of the box. Oh, my God. This is intense. Holy cow. It's like a microphone. Oh, wow. Look at all of this, guys. It looks like a doll. Wow. Look at all of it's that. A, yo. Yo. This is intense. I'm so scared to. Looks like an expensive doll. Oh, you know what? We're, we're working hard. Smart. I think you're supposed to. Oh, I'm supposed to. Oh, wow. Ah. Wow, you're smart. <laughs> Holy what? cow. What? Slick Rick the Ruler. That's crazy. That's Can y'all see this? That's crazy right there. This is bananas looking. Uh, this is a. What is that? Like a, a bust? Yes. From and it's heavy too. The network company for Def Jam's 35th wow. anniversary. This is really. He's it. got like chains on his neck. That's so cool. Oh, oh, oh his arm. It's all right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, slick Rick. Oh, Ricky. Man. Oh no, Ricky. Oh no, Ricky. Ricky. Some some glue would do it. Some super right. some yeah. gorilla glue. We'll get some glue on there. That's pretty cool, though. That's I got to say. Let's put him up here. One arm Ricky. All right. There we go. That's pretty dope. Is this your water? Yes. Okay. You drink that. All right. This is going well so far. We got some nice stuff. Okay. Excuse me. I'm trying to earn it there. It's getting hot in here, right? That is so fire. Man. All right. This is coming in. Niagara Falls, New York. Have you ever performed in Niagara Falls? Yes. Okay. Have you ever been to the actual yes. Niagara Falls? Yeah, it's crazy up there. The water turns colors. It's crazy. Yeah. Niagara Falls is part of like the capital area, right? With uh, like Albany and stuff. True, true. Is that right? True. Oh, this is some crazy shit right here. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. So this is some, I think this is 1990, no, 1989, no, 91 or 89. Whoa. TV Whoa. Jacket. Jacket? Oh! Ah! Right. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, my God. It comes in a sandwich bag. That's That's crazy. Oh my god. Or a weed bag, whichever this one. Right. A really well, this would be an ounce, right? Oh my god. Wow. It's Whoa. a public enemy. MTV jacket. Oh no my god. No way. Why do I keep saying MTV? Like why am I so convinced? Yes. Here we go. MTV. Okay. I'm standing up. I'm showing y'all. Ready? This is crazy, y'all. Grab, grab an arm. That's crazy. Look at that. So that's Wow, Def Jam on that side, MTV on that side. Let's show the front. Oh my God, that's crazy. Usually the MTV ones say the year that it is. 1989. It says it right in the collar. 1989. And it's my size. <laughs> Look at that. This is dope. That's crazy right there. Can, can we get a close-up of this 1989 tag? This MT MTV 1989 tag. That's, That's crazy. Amazing. Spencer, my uh, handsome uh, six foot three assistant, he works out every day. He shaves his forearms. Thank you so much, Spencer. I don't either. This is a terrible place for this. This is a terrible place for this. I'm gonna put it over here. All right. All right. I'm going to let you do that one. Where's that one coming in from? You have, you have to throw it. Yeah, you have to throw it. Nice. Good. It's all in the wrist, baby. All in the wrist. This is from the UK. Oh. The UK. That was my last stop on my last tour. Holy shit. Oh shit! This is that. This is that thing I told you. Oh about. shoot! All right, so this is this is really intense, you guys. First, let's start with this. So from pretty sure this is Italy. Yes, Torino, Italy. This is an Italian performance agreement. Wow. 
for it, all of De La Soul. And it's signed by all of De La Soul. Whoa. And it's a performance agreement from 1990, Whoa. July 3rd, 1990, signed by all the members That's crazy. of De La Soul. That's crazy. Okay. That's that by itself is really cool. But then when you add Whoa. the signed CD cover huh. by all members and the actual backstage passes, wow! I mean, that's amazing stuff, guys. That's as good as that gets. Wow. What do you think of that? What do you think of De La Soul? Put them up there on the Mount Rushmore Hip Hop too, man. Put them up there Everybody too, Everybody huh? before me that did what De La did, you know, legends, legends. Wait, so let's see, 89 and you guys came out in 92. So you were really like a senior in high school when Three Feet High and Rising came out. 1990? What year was 89. 89 was my first year in college. In college? I graduated high school. You were a freshman. So do you remember... Actually listening to Three Feet of High and course, Rising? Of course, man. Of course. I was like everybody at that time. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a little bit more intense for me because, you know, I was rapping at the time. But, you know, you know, at college, you know. But So who do you who would you say directly influenced you the most? You know, like who were you listening to at the time when you kind of formulated the Daz FX sound? We were listening to a lot of at the time special ed. Mm. A lot of Big Daddy Kane, a lot of brand Nubians, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but but yeah, a lot of biz. Come over here know. a little because you're a little uh, bit off camera on our Instagram and we want everyone to see just how handsome yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah. These you days. know it, you know it. I guess my good side. But yeah, we were, we we're, but we're big. Well, I am. I'm a big Coogee rap fan. Ooh. Big, um, but but for me, the guy that puts the words where they need to be is Big Daddy Kane. He mm. was real. You know, I'm at my apex. Others are below. Nothing but a milliliter. He's just a kilo. Second to none, man. Don't try to kind of. You know, those kind of things were different. You know? So you were impressed. You were you were taken by that fast flow. Uh, that not, big it wasn't daddy came. So much the fast flow. It was where he was putting the words mm. and what he was saying while he was. Nobody is saying I'm a. I'm at my apex. You know, you're below. Nothing but a milliliter. You just, a, you know, I'm a kilo. You know, the, that's a crazy the, the words and the metaphors this man was using. You know, it, it's it, if you really write his words out and look where he's putting the words, you're like, yo, you're he's saying he's yeah. saying some serious stuff. I totally agree. All right, speaking of serious stuff. Oh, nice. eBay. Okay. Where is that coming in from? This is coming in all the way from oh. the Bronx, New York. Sweet. All right. BX, stand up. All right. Let's see. Where do I begin to rock? I know, right? I'd go on the side. On the side. We, did, we did not alert uh, Dre that he would actually be doing, like, office administrative work on this show, and I feel a little bad. I'm going to leave it to you to do and yet, at the same time, I'm enjoying watching you struggle. <clears throat> I don't want to scar anything up here on this uh, present. All right. All right. What do we have? I mean, it's coming in from the Bronx, so I have, like, incredibly high expectations already. Oh. What could that be? So it looks like so I check know this out. Is. So check this out. So these are contact sheets for De La Soul. You can have one. Oh, wow. Hold it up. You can have one. Wow. Hold it up. These are original De La Soul contact sheets from a photo shoot that Whoa. they did for their second or third album. This is uh, crazy, right? I here. think this was for. No, you know what this is for? This is oh wow! Look at that. Hold that up. Yeah. So I actually think this was a clothing line shoot for what was it called? PNG or PNC? PNB. Thank you, RBI. Look at this. Look at all of these signed De La Soul glossies that we now have in our collection. It goes without saying. Crazy. This is going in the museum and not Crazy. the shop. So this is an incredible lot that we got here. Crazy. And you can even see they've marked off like which the shots they, they're going to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know what? I'm lying. Ready? It wasn't. I knew it was three letters, but it wasn't P 
PNB. It was LRG. LRG. What year was this? That's a great question. My guess. We can make a guess on this. I think that is around the, the AOI because the De La Soul logo, the typeface. I think that was the typeface they, lo- they used back then ah. towards the latter part. Of you the are game. a hunt. Good eye. Good eye. <laughs> Good history. I'm telling you, he's, he's our music director for a reason. You know it. <laughs> he picked out the font that they used. This is the font they used on that AI album. Whoa. Damn, man. You Whoa. You can't get nothing by that guy. Whoa. Nothing. Where did that's a shot? Yeah, was there a thing for it? All right, sweet. All right, Spencer, do you mind, sir? Oh, okay. Oh, CLB, can you uh, randomly speak about uh, our experience this past weekend? We were in the Boogie Down Bronx. Oh yeah. Fifteen twenty Sedgwick. It was phenomenal. We honored Coke LaRock. Grand Wizard Theodore, uh, uh, Grandmaster Kaz. Who am I missing? Uh, MC, MC Globe. Globe. How could I forget? MC it, Globe. It was moving because for, for them, it was the first time they were coming back to that exact location, which is the birth of hip hop. Wasn't that crazy? I yes. was just assuming that Coca and the guys had been back right. to the room, but no. But the fact that they had just it was the first time that they were returning there you could wow. see and feel the emotion wow. then they got up and they were riffing on the mic grand wizard theodore got on the ones and twos it was wow. just so dope Grand wizard theodore started ripping it up wow. and he obviously invented the scratch wow. and mc globe started doing uh like this thing called pop rap yeah what's it called pop right mc globe it was I can't remember the style he was talking about, but yeah. it was like it was some something around the word pop. Right on the yeah. mic, I'm yeah. telling yeah. you, Globe yeah. is sharp as hell. He's very yeah. sharp. I'm telling you, it was an incredible. And then Coke La Rock, the, the pop style, it was pop, called style. The pop style. That's yeah. right. Wow. And then Coke La Rock's the world's first MC rapper yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. And he was just looking around, and I was like, Coke. When's the last time you've been back in this room? I just thought like every five, ten years they would go. <laughs> He's like, I haven't been back in this room for forty plus years. Yeah. I was like, wow. Damn. This shit was really historic and really amazing. So shout out to all of our inductees. Damn. Oh, you want to do a big one? Oh, is that okay? So this is actually pretty neat. So um, there's a lot of different cool ways to like release material, right? Release music okay. and whatnot. Okay. This to me is one of the coolest ways because. Def Jam for the anniversary, it's like the 25th or 35th anniversary of Def Jam. They made Whoa. an entire they made an entire turntable there you go, for the 30th anniversary. So look at this. That's crazy. What? They made an entire turntable. Literally, a whole turntable for the 30th anniversary. Okay. And Whoa. inside, I'm not gonna open it because this is for our store, I think. We already have one of these in the collection. Inside this turntable is all of the best singles from Def Jam. So I just thought this is a Whoa. great box, a great way, you know, to sh- to display. Isn't that cool? The singles, all of the vinyl singles are inside vinyl, vinyl singles. Wow, pretty neat, right? That, that is crazy. It's pretty dope. All That's right, crazy. Let's get let's get Dre right, back involved. Right. I don't know what you got. What do you got? Where's it coming from? Yeah, this one is coming all the way live to you from Georgia Ave, Washington, D.C. Are you being serious? No, no I'm not man, being serious. Whatever. I was all like, right. wait, how's that possible? <laughs> this one is coming all the way from what is that, Minneapolis? Maplewood, Minnesota. Is that Minnesota? Minnesota. All right. Fragile. By the way, shout out uh, Culture Freedom. Speaking of poor righteous teachers, uh, we were just showing uh wise intelligence new book but also shout out culture freedom who is hip-hop's top chef so there's only a few hip-hop legends that are chefs and he's one of them and he makes incredible food and sauce yeah you send one out to my man jerobi too oh that's right thank you for my jerobi white is also oh oh, Oh, my god look at that okay let's try to hold this up this is a 1990 
MTV watch. Wow. Never used. This is, wow. I feel like a great MTV day, huh? Wow. And I, I, the look on CLB's face <laughs> says that she's immediately <laughs> stealing this <laughs> from us. <laughs> she so... looked at me like, like I wasn't really opening it right now. Wow. wow. This is kind of amazing. It's Yo MTV Raps 1990. Can you see that thing? Good it still leather, has the good, plastic good on leather it. band crazy. on it. it. Still has the plastic that's on it. That's crazy right there. Wow. That's a good find. That's that's wild. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't, I don't even new. know what to say about that. It's really cool. All right. All right. Got my eye on that. Yeah, all right. This is fun. Wow. Okay. All right. This is me. I'm gonna do all right, this. That's one. You? All right. This is me. Hold on, what's in here? Every now and then I throw it and I forget that there's great stuff inside. All right, this is coming in from Oh, look, it's your favorite town again in the Netherlands. Shadam. Shadam. You know, he don't give a damn and she, she don't, don't give, give a, a damn. damn. <laughs> Shadam. You got to be kidding me. Don't do this to me again. Don't do this to me again. Am I am I having deja vu? What's Wasn't that? this the one the wife's organizer thing? Are you serious? What the fuck is going on? Is it Obscu another one? What the hell's going on? Shadam. Okay, thank you. Spencer <laughs> knew immediately. He saw the look of disappointment on my face. That's you call those people in Shadam and you let them know. We don't give a damn. I had my eye on the other one anyway. So there you what go. in the <laughs> world? <laughs> my God. All right, let's try this again. My turn again? Your, oh, yeah. your turn. Records are forever. From Maricopa, Arizona. You know, there's only one thing I can tell you about Maricopa, Arizona. They do not fucking play around. Don't get hemmed up in that Maricopa. Sheriff, that sheriff. That sheriff he's gonna make you wear they, that they, they wear pink panties. They make the men in jail wear pink underwear. Now, is this from a personal experience? Or? <laughs> oh, I have I have heard that, okay. that that is a problem. Okay, cool. All right. Well, oh, man. that's incredible. Whoa. All right. So these are actually. Whoa. You can hold up a That's couple crazy. of these. Here. You got a couple. These are boom boxes. Hold that up. Mm -hmm. Are handmade boom box replicas of the famous boom boxes. Radio Rahim. Thank you. Radio Rahim. Lloyd's boom box from uh, Records Are Forever. And uh, Gil Scott Haran's boombox. Whoa. So we got radio, all these different boomboxes. That's so dope. Ultra dope. Wow. This I one, am this digging one, this. Yeah, this is nice. Is this what that is up there? No. Radio Rahim's boombox is a different model. The exact model, I cannot tell you. But it is not that. You know what? I'm lying. You know where Radio Rahim's boombox is? It's actually in the African American History Museum. Yeah, I'm almost 100% positive. Yeah, here in DC, I'm almost 100% positive. I'm gonna try to show this. Oh, wow. Who wow. was that dude holding the? Who was this? Man again? This is this is Lloyd from Records Are Forever, the movie. No, wait, I'm lying. No, say say no, anything. Was, um, say anything. Sorry. Say anything. You are. Sorry. Right. You're right. All right. I saw that movie one time, but I was probably high, so I don't remember. It was such an iconic scene. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, Spencer, handsome, tall assistant. Who shaves his feet. That's right. He has hairy feet, which is an affliction that not everybody's proud of. Can you open that? Yeah. You got. Oh, sorry. Tell us where it's coming from. This one is coming from Los Angeles. City Los of Angels. Cali. Angeles. Cali. I'm scared. Yeah. Really nice. uh, uh. Let's see what we got. Uh. What do we? Oh, check this out. All right, is J Ro? So this oh, is Roo. this is J Ro from the the Alcoholics. Yeah, these are lyrics from J Ro. Wow, just a random lyric sheet. Wow, that's crazy. And this is going in our museum because we are trying to. Do the, uh, 
I'm not going to have anyone else try to spit this, but I'm just going to let you know these are wow. these are lyrics from from J. Row, the alcoholic. Nice, RBI. And you wow. know who produced this track? A lot of wow. people don't realize. I know RBI does. You know who produced this track right here? Who? Oh. Diamond D. Diamond D is one of the most underrated out there. I I, I gotta give you a little correction. This one's oh, yeah. E Swift. E Swift did this Swift? one. Yeah, Diamond did. I'm gonna play the one. E Swift Diamond did. I played the one. Oh, this whole time I thought that was Diamond D, but uh, Diamond did produce on this album. Yeah, he did. Okay. Wow. Thank you for correcting me. What's that Diamond D's album? Um, the classic. What's the oh, name of that man. one? Oh man, Stunts, Blunts, and Hip Hop. Crazy. Man, wasn't that a classic? What year was that? What what year was Stunts, Blunts, and Hip Hop? Ninety one. Yeah, classic. As a V State. Oh yeah. Ninety two. Wow. This yeah. this has a lot of. Where is this from? Uh, oh. Torrance, California. Cali in the building. Oh, hey. wow. You can wow. hold that up. And this is perfect timing. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Rest in peace to the notorious one. 1997 right here. 1997. So the uh, the very famous Baron Claiborne photograph of Biggie Smalls wearing the six dollar plastic crown that sold for six hundred thousand yeah, dollars at yeah, yeah. Sotheby's first ever hip hop auction. Wow, that's uh, that's really amazing because wow. uh, March 9th, obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. we we lost you know one of our greatest MCs. I was in the studio at the time when I all got the time news. you you actually remember when it yeah. happened. Yeah. Wow. Wow. One more flat piece. Uh, yo, uh, hey, <laughs> uh, that's what I do. Uh, I thought something was coming. <clears throat> uh, oh wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you do this one. Okay. Where's it coming from? Indiana. Oh, uh. Indiana. Indiana. You remember playing Indiana? Yeah. What Indianapolis, probably. Yeah. Oh. KMD. Oh wow! Yeah. Look at that. The Whoa. eight by ten glossy. Whoa! Rest in peace, MF Doom. Rest in peace, That's Zev. Crazy. Love X. That's crazy right there. Yeah. So we have to have an original KMD. Oh. Sub Rock. Rest in peace as well. Pretty cool, huh? That's a good shot. Look at how young he is. That's crazy. Prom prom oh, wait a second. Oh, we're on the same label. Oh, my God. Yo. Yo. That's crazy. We were both on the same label. You guys were both on Electra. That's right. Wow. Right. Thank you for reminding me. Look at That's this. Right. This is the actual press kit for KMD. Oh, my God. The actual Electra press original press kit. Wow. Man, I, th I was happy with the 8x10. Wow. But we got, we got. It. You want to try to? Wow! That's nice. His name was Little Sam. Up. Oh, and for the longest time, I really related to Peach Fuzz because I couldn't grow a beard. I was trying so hard. You know what I mean? When you're like about 15. Yeah. Oh man! And I was trying to look older, but I couldn't. I had nothing. Nothing. All right, you do this one. Right. Where's that? Wilkes. Wilkes Barry, Pennsylvania. Wilkes Barry. W I L K E S Barry. Never heard of it. Me neither. Weirdly enough, I have. You have? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think when you're driving to the Poconos, you see that sign. That, hey. Did this did this instrumental come out when the single came out? It did. Okay. You know what? You can't have all of the good traits. You know what I mean? You're an incredible rapper. 
but no one, no one's ever challenged you like this before. In a box opening contest, <laughs> right? I would lose, right? Like Who you were good better? at the rap contest, but box opening, not so much. All right. I, I, oh wow. Who's gonna? You know what? This is like surgery, man. Yes, Hold on, I'm gonna go this way. Like this. Ooh. This is cool. Good luck finding something to play for this what one. What could this be? This is what is what is one of your I know it's one of your favorite movies. I know this is one of my favorite movies. So one of my favorite movies of all time is Warriors Come Out and no play. Way. We gotta look at these. Oh, they're this sealed is up. Classic. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. These are figurines, yeah, deluxe but... box set of wow. the Warriors. But the there's actual. Two. Well, Open once one. they're for the shops. Okay. These are crazy. Okay, Good nice. job. Come out and play. No, right? Nice. Oh. Our music director is so freaking awesome. This is awesome. crazy. Come on, man. See. You want to see it? This is crazy, right? It's so cool, right? Yeah, this is crazy. Yo. What year was the Warriors? What, what was that, 79? Yeah. 78, 79. Yeah. Classic. Because Wild Style came like shortly after. Classic. These two movies, Wild Style yeah. and this, are yeah, probably yeah. more responsible for getting me into hip hop. Yeah. Oh, I'm with you. But why? What? You. But why? Because it wasn't hip hop in, in this film. Why did I think this was so hip hop? I don't even know. I think it's a generational thing because Kung Fu movies, Star Wars, all these things coalesced around the same time. And that's Bronx influence thing right there. True. Warriors. True. As far as I've oh, been told, also of the, the Black gangs. Spades, right. Because of the gangs. Spades, that's gangs, why I think Savage it's hip-hop. and all that. That's yeah. why. Classic. Wow. That's so cool. The Warriors. That's it? Oh. No, that's it? That's it. Oh, man. Really? Yeah. All right. Let's do something real quick. Okay, uh, to close with, let's tell people. So, the way that I discovered you in modern life, yeah, is you put out like 20 unreleased Daz Effects tracks. Yeah, I did. And I immediately, the second I saw you were doing that, I immediately hit you up. Yeah, you did. Let me tell you, those are the, some of the, I have listened to that album so oh, many yeah? times. Okay. I've, if it were a tape, it would have popped. Ah, I'm with you. Can you tell people about? You know, where people can get at you, get some of that rare music, maybe get some merch. Like, how do people get um, in contact? Bookings are going to start happening yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. The easy way is hit us up on our Instagram, official DOS Effects. And, um, you know, email me, DOS Effects Dre at Hotmail, D R A Y at Hotmail. But, you know, we're real easy to find on the gram. But, um, you know, I was just looking around for some old songs that we hadn't used and some uh some guys from europe that put out vinyl hit me up and was like do you want to do anything with these old records i said of course so we got down to the get down to the business and made it happen yo if, if you don't know yeah. what i'm talking about or if you would like 20 unreleased tracks from Daz effects yeah Please hit up the hit me on the ground. at official yeah. Daz Effects. You already know it. And if people want to uh, to book you or if people want any verses from you, yeah. where's the best way to get at Man, you? Man, hit me up, Daz Effects Dre at Hotmail. Again, our, our European booking agency is called Stateside Booking. So everything is real easy to find on the gram. Stateside Bookings. They deal with us, game, name dropping. Um, you know, a lot of. The guys that do Europe, you know, there's a bunch of us. So nice. You know it. CLB. Yeah. CLB. Do you have any questions house. for Crazy Tracy? What? Yes, I do. Oh, here. Yeah. What kind of influence or which artists like from Jamaica has influence oh. on your music? Um, you if know, any. good nah, question. Definitely. Um, the, the, you know, I, my pops was playing a whole bunch of the old stuff. So, of course, the Bob Marley's, uh, uh well, who was it? Guess who's coming to dinner? Not the dreadlocks, you yeah. know, um, Black Uru, <laughs> a lot of the old Yellow Man. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, Super Cat, you know, a lot of the acts that was just real reggae, reggae, you know. So, yeah, I'm old reggae, reggae. And, and, and just out of curiosity, as we're closing up here, so what did your mom say when you said, like, hey, mom, I, I won this contest and they want to give me a record deal? 
or a junior in college, what did your mom I mean, say? If you know Jamaican parents, she was not having it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I called on the phone. She hung up on me. Wasn't having it. EPM, ooh, EPM, ooh. You know, one of those. Yeah. She couldn't even say the name. But um, my pops was really my shield. So he was kind of more. He, he He's a reggae artist, too. You know, everybody in Jamaica is a reggae oh, artist. Oh, he's a reggae So he's one of those type of dudes. From, I get it from my pops, the arts. Uh-huh. So he was like, you know, we'll work on it. We'll give you a semester off. So that was the most intense semester of my life, staying at home, trying to wait for EPMD to get me a record deal. Did it happen within the semester? It sure did. It happened right at the end of the semester off and got the call. Yo, I think we because there was a bidding war over us. Mm. Def Jam. Every label at the time wanted us. You know, every label at the time was a bidding war. So as for us, we didn't we didn't know anything. care about a bidding war. We just wanted to get signed. One label and show were, your parents that this is a real thing. Of course. So, you know, was there that moment after being signed, after having the just first Christmas, she, okay, I came okay, through okay. like Santa Claus, <laughs> the bags. OK, that car is outside. That's for you, too. You know, oh, you got those, your parents. Yeah, it was car. one of those did the whole did the, did. Did that all of that, that stuff? Yeah, so it was one of those. So you got to see the look in your mom's got eye of like, it. okay, to, I, right. did she ever say, "I'm sorry"? Of so, course, not. I'm I was, sorry. I was wrong. Yeah, I was but, wrong. You, know, you could tell them the emotions, and then you know what was really good was her friends would tell her about. Uh, me. So that would be the you know she's minding her business, and our friends are like, "Isn't your son?" <laughs> you know. Yeah. Nice. Wow. It was real good to go back to Virginia State too. You know to. But we didn't really get to go back when I would love to have gone back, which is at the apex of our fame. We were so busy. Right. We didn't get to go back. Oh, so you never got to actually play to your college friends at the college. Right. Oh, and say, look what we did. I don't think, but. Right, right, right. But yeah, we just never got to go back and just walk the yard and. Right. You know what I mean? We were just busy, busy. You couldn't believe how busy we were, you know? Wow. Speaking of busy, 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 DJ RBI, do you have any questions for our, our friend here? Yeah, yeah d- definitely. Um, yeah, we could do a bunch, but I have two in I'm particular, here. right? So yeah. uh, one has to do with the song I'm playing right now, right? So this No is diggity. A- right. So you Shout guys have DJ an idea where I'm going with that? No, I don't. Uh, so check it out. After this song came out, this phrase went into the lexicon. Right. You know, no dick. It's still yeah. in the lexicon. Oh, yeah. That's okay. But go ahead. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> so how did you feel about that? Like, we can think about who's uh, Black Street. Yeah. Well, that song came about just me and Scoob in the crib. And we would always just have these little phrases. So no diggity stands for no doubt. Right. I don't know if people. So we just was like, yo, you going you, you gonna to smoke a hell no diggity. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um. We got up to the we we got the song from Premier. We got actually when we went to go see Primo, we got no diggity. But at the same time, we went to his crib. He gave us those two beats. We were undecisive as which one to go to as a single. When we brought it to the label, <clears throat> brought it to the label, they hated it. They said no diggity. It sounds like you're saying no more iggity. So they weren't trying to hear that because they knew that was our thing, the Iggy. So they fought us, fought us to where we got to put it on the B side of real hip hop. Right. That's why uh, when you see the album, the single cover of real hip hop, that's why it scribbled on the side. No diggity. The label just slapped it up there. They really fought us on that. Hmm. You know, but I was super tight years later when like um, it was a street slang or Black Street and them came out using it. It was like, yo, this is, I told you it was going to be. And, and it's one of our biggest songs now. I feel like LL used it for the theme song of his show in really? the house. Yeah, he was like, Did he no really? diggity, no doubt. Come on, no diggity, oh, yeah? no doubt. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I yeah. thought you knew about because it, it, it tripped me out. Like, wow, this is everywhere. So We've actually done know. shows. We've actually done shows and passing fans i don't know if they stumbled into the show they they've come up to me after a sign-in at a sign-in and be like i love your set but why'd you do the black street song i'm like wow Wow. (laughs) how do you answer that (laughs) 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 recognize you better recognize you better recognize (laughs) you'd be okay answering it if you got money off of it but geez you understand come on do you have another question yeah well the other other thing is not necessarily a question but um I've I've watched I watched Nori and them this weekend and they had Laws of the Underground. Yeah, on. I saw that. And yeah. um, they were given their account of the supposed Das Lords rivalry. So I just wanted to get your insight from like oh, what's okay. your perspective on the Laws of the Underground Das effects. Great question. Um, to us, 
at the time there wasn't no rivalry. You understand? Because Lords of the Underground, shout out to the homies. We've moved past that, but at the time, everybody was gunning for us. So Lords was just in to me, to us, they were just one of many. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't for us. Maybe on their side, it was oh, but for us, we wasn't really, it was them, it was funk dubious. There were a lot more other guys that we thought sounded more like us because funk dubious he was using our cadence and he was kind of using our punchlines. Mm -hmm. you understand so for us lords i know they and i feel for all those guys because they were a duo you know and and once you're a duo back then you were and then you know a lot of labels wanted their acts to sound like Dos Effects. right right but we never really i mean the lords for us just came it was another wave of another song that did you guys know them honestly, before from previously well they have a relationship do it all has a relationship with red man they're from jersey right Newark. so we, we as the years went on and on and on red man so we didn't have no particular beef with lords i mean you know it wasn't like i said we had a long list of rappers coming for us and try to subliminal not unless we heard the word dos effects in the rhyme <laughs> then we were coming Right. You know, especially my partner school he would he had time he'd be like yo i think they're talking about us i got a verse for this i mean i was like not unless they're saying dos effects you know, i feel I'm like gonna... you guys probably have some of the thickest skin because think about this right he's telling us we're literally telling him about 18 different examples of people yeah. stealing style stealing their words Slang. stealing this stuff and he's just like so nice about it he's like oh <laughs> i was tight about it at the time yeah, <laughs> but like <laughs> but like real talk like their influence right. goes so not only underappreciated right. but under recognized right. yeah. and yes. under financed because right. yeah. it's not like you know Electra, in my opinion, should have sued uh, Black Street and said, "Hey, you, you know, you know, if you're if you're not going to cease and desist on that single, at least give us you True. know fifty percent of the points or True. something like that." I'll throw them on a remix, throw or throw them on a remix, throw us on a remix. I always tell fans, I'm the the real Dre that should have been on that No Diggity <laughs> record. That's dope. You know That's what dope. I'm saying? But, right. you know, for me and also, you know, I, I'm older now, wiser now. So I just think we should have and could have capitalized more meaning. We should have went on tour with Lords. We should have went on tour right. with Funk Dubious. We should have. It was a sound. It was a movement. Right. We should have went on and, you know, worked it out. But when you're in your 20s, you got money in your pocket, people in your ear. Right. You're, you know, you're not yeah. trying to hear that. But for me, it's similar. And I see it going on. I think. I think Nikki and Cardi should have been did a record together, right, been right, on right, tour together, right. capitalize off yes, of it instead right, of be yeah, divisive. We're in music. With it. We're not in the fight game. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. Like, so for me, but you couldn't tell me that when I was 22. Right. But now I'm old. I'm wise. I'm like, come on, listen. We should have been did the tour together. Right. Yeah. Right. Like you know? KRS and uh, Shannon and with those. Yeah, yeah. KRS. Right. right. Yes, Good example. They should have been did that. That would have been a great show though. Lords they did. They did. and Daz Effect. Oh, yeah, you guys definitely. Right. Yeah. But we've done shows now together because in the 2000s. I mean, you can't Snow stop goons, us in, got in you Europe. Guys, yeah, in Europe, we're real yeah. busy in Europe. So we've done shows with Lord multiple times. Yeah, so. hey, yo, I got one last question too. Do it, do it. So do check it. it out. Do it all. When, when, when <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> when, um, when Eric and Paris split, sucked in '92. Yeah. yeah. So there were clear factions. There was uh the Death Squad, and you yeah. guys yeah. remain as the Hit Squad. I kind of felt like there was some acrimony in certain places. Yeah. Is that true? And did that show up on records? There was a Red Man song that I thought was directed at you guys. Could have been. Which one? Um, can I play it? I'll just play it for you. Please. Okay. Let's just hear it. Yes. Right. So let's, was, let's examine. It's called <laughs> We We Run New York. <laughs> let's hear this. Oh, I would now I, I see why I would, I would I would say that was um well first of all I think red has always been tight because I am the nicest one from Jersey. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And nicer one from Jersey. I, uh -huh. I think I'm the best MC that's ever come out of Jersey. That's one. But I think, um, but let me tell you, keep it real. When when the crew split up, you know, there was tension there. There was tension. I'm not even going to front. Eric and P really had a beef. And they people think because you're in a crew that you all hang out like that. We never knew Redman. I, I, even though I'm from Jersey, I didn't know Redman. They had discovered him already. So we were introduced to the to the um, crew. And, I, I, and just to keep it a buck with you, Red Man was on deck to come out. Red Man was on deck to come out. But when EPMD found us, 
we slid up to the number one slot because, like I said, there was a crazy bidding war going on. And I think Red felt some kind of way about it. You know what I mean? He might deny it, but I know what time it is. You know what right. I'm saying? So there's been, you know, so for him to drop subliminals, um, I'm not surprised. You know what I'm saying? Uh. Yeah. But T.I. said a great thing. You know, when you're the moon and the dog is barking at the moon, the moon doesn't even acknowledge the dog. Ooh. The wow. moon is too busy shining. There you, you dig? Go. Mm. Wow. There you go. Mm. That's right. Wow. You understand? Yes, sir. So and and on that note. Yeah. You are tuned into Hip Hop in Action. Yeah. And if you missed our incredible uh, induction ceremony this past weekend at 1520 Cedric Avenue, we're going to close with that video. Um, but in the meantime, <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> That's exciting. That scared me. But uh, Crazy Drazy, please uh, tell them yeah. one more time the Instagram where they can find you. Official. X, you'll see us. It got the, you know, we're verified and all that. There's a whole bunch of other. Uh, pages out there, but official DOS effects. Mine is crazy Drazy. I'm on the gram. Hit us up. You know what I'm saying? Hit us up. You can find me on Instagram at DJ Boom underscore LV and of course at the Hip Hop Museum DC, yeah. where you're probably watching this from. CLB, where, the, where can they find you? You can find me on Insta at Christine L. Bowen and at CLB Live TV. All right. Until our next hip hop and action. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my God. Homie, I keep, come on now. God damn. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, I'm so I sorry. Mean, I mean, you hands know. of God. Please tell us where can they find you, sir? Simply at DJ underscore RBI. Say it one more time. DJ underscore RBI. Hands of God. Every Let's time go. you DM me, it just says the hands of God. You know that? <laughs> word, word. Okay, it's very intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, until next hip hop in action, peace. We are out of here. building is a landmark. It's the birthplace of hip hop for a lot of us in here. And the people who are respected in hip hop all cite this place as the birthplace of hip hop. You were the first DJ that I was able to see. I wasn't able to see her. That was right. too short. I created the needle drop before I created the scrap. That was and when I created the needle drop, just playing on my mother's stereo, picking the needle up on the James Man. Brown record, Punk oh. the Rock. What's up, everybody? Right. What's Yo, up, man? They classified me as them, see, but I played them. So this is why I know when cats say they was at certain parties, I knew you wasn't there because oh, you would have said I played the music. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 the grandest of the grandest. Who's that? Who's that? The grandest of the grandest. That's it. I'm going to thank Cool Hurt because he's a hero of mine. I want to thank Coke the Rock for spitting the first rhyme. I want to thank the Grand Wizard Theodore for inventing the scratch and the cuts galore. But don't underestimate an MC's task. Grandmaster Cash will surprise your ass. <laughs> All, right. All right? And when the party people want to know who said this, right. what? Tell them G-L-O-B-E showed up. Thank y'all very much. All right, if everybody wants to have a seat, we are going to kick off right about now. So for me to stand in this party room right now is real is a real trip for me and to see Coke the rock standing in here and theodore and globe and kaz and, and all the rest of y'all you know who you are <laughs> everybody in here i mean just to just to be in this room right now i'm, I'm still soaking it in so there's a reason my brain was farting because it was just like where the hell am i this is this is where it all began and this is the place that gave me an identity i was thinking about you know, like Robert Johnson's role in the history of the blues.
Buddy Bolden's role in the history of jazz, and how sometimes the most iconic and most potent and most innovative artists do not become mainstream names, but they become the names that are the most celebrated by, on one hand, scholars and academics, on another hand, super nerd fanboys and fangirls. All of these ventures together will ultimately be what helps people 100 years from now, 200 years from now, let's say 300 years from now, to understand the absolutely extraordinary cultural narrative that commenced in this room. Most of y'all know her. A lot of y'all don't even know Coppola Rock. A lot of y'all heard of my name, you thought I was a myth, but again, I didn't write music, I didn't follow people, I was like a regular bronze cat. I did this, I did that. What you really did, we all did it together. Today, G-L-O-V-E means uh, God loves our best efforts. Because mm. that's what it's all about now. Remember the days when hip hop began to pop off on your block? All of a sudden, out of the blue, the world was doing it too? Anyone really ready to battle, baby? We can go battle for battle. Forget about mouth for mouth. I'm knocking knuckleheads out. Blow up the blow, hit up the hit, the universe lit. Combination, not the combination, we are all determined not to quit. The snap at the crack of the bite of the apple, the one and the only, the mac of the road, he nevertheless tried to triple it up, pop, juking it up, shaking it, breaking it, tasting it, making it, pop it in every move, I'm making it, thumping it, jumping it, thumping it, jumping it, bumping it. That's for all my folks out there. That's what MC Pop is. I honestly believe that I was introduced, I was born into this culture, born into this art form. I didn't wake up one day and it's like, oh, I wanna, you know, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, I wanna be into hip hop. I was into hip hop from day one, you know? And um, God gave me this gift. Everybody in this room has a gift. And I realized, what my gift was early on. There's so many DJs that put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this art form, into this culture we call hip hop. And every time you see me get on the turntables, I carry the spirit of all these people. There's nothing that has affected this planet in the last 45 years bigger than hip hop, other than the internet. As far as our culture is concerned, it's 40 some odd years old. And that's not old, and that's really not long when you think about time uh, and, and in a continuum. So we had a lot more history to make. So thank you. Thank you, and thank you. One love. This building is a landmark. It's the birthplace of hip hop for a lot of us in here, and the people who are respected in hip-hop all cite this place as the birthplace of hip-hop.